Today we talk about how to get your bike ready after a long layoff. Hello legends and super legends, welcome to Vela Harmony. In today's video I want to respond to a request from one of our patrons who uh, asked about how I got my bike ready after being off for a long period of time, particularly the ride with my girls. So what I've done is I've put the bike I used that day, I called Nago on the stand. But really the first thing starts with, starts with, first of all, the condition of your bike before the layoff. As you all know, I recommend keeping up with the maintenance consistently, meaning every week you ride, you need to keep your, your chain clean. Every day actually after a ride, I clean my chain. But if you keep your bike maintained, then you have less to do after a layoff. But regardless of how well maintained the bike is, the main thing you need to do is make sure your drivetrain is ready for the road because our drivetrain is exposed. So it gets the elements and it also depends on where you store your bikes. My bikes are stored here in the studio inside the house. If your bike is stored inside like I store mine or in the garage, then you have less stuff to do. Personally, I don't recommend storing your bicycle outside because our drivetrain gets rusty, it gets surface rust on it very easily if it gets a lot of moisture on it. It doesn't have to be rained on. You know, condensation will also put moisture on there and then you get surface rust. Not the end of the world, you can wipe it off and re-lube, but that's primarily what I did before my ride because everything else had been maintained. I didn't need to do any bottom bracket or anything. You usually don't need to. Most of the bottom bracket systems now are sealed to where other than the periodic maintenance because it's been sitting does not mean that you need to go in there to do anything because it's really from using the bike that kind of brings up the need for the bottom bracket maintenance or your headset maintenance. So if the bike's been sitting, the main thing you need to do is make sure your drivetrain is ready. So primarily all I did was a rag, wipe the chain down, even though it had been lubed prior to me putting it up for months. I made sure I did that first. And the reason you want to lube the chain is because even if you lube it properly before you put it away, after months of inactivity, you want to make sure that you have enough lube on the chain for your ride because you don't want to put a lot of stresses on your drivetrain. So all you need to do is, what I usually do is I take this marker, I pick a link and I mark it. Because that, that will let me know that I've hit every link. I do not waste the lube by just liberally spraying on there. I mean, you could do that, but I don't. I like to just drop my lube on the link. So each link gets a drop because if I do more than that, there's more to clean after I'm done. You're probably wonder, wondering, why do you clean after you're done? Well, because you really only need the lube to drop on the roller and it gets in between where the pin is. It's the pin that needs the lube. We can't see the pin because you can see the side here, but that's where we want the lube. It's on that pin that goes inside the roller. That's where you need it. You know, anything you can see is just a dirt magnet. Remember that. When you ride with other people and the chain's filthy, they need to just wipe that thing down. I hate working on bikes or changing flats on a bike that has a dirty drivetrain. When people bring their bikes to me for me to work on, if it's very dirty, I, let, I give them the choice of cleaning it themselves or I charge them for cleaning. I don't work on dirty bikes. So if you notice, I've done those links, I pull it down. I have that marker dot on one link. All I'm doing is dropping one drop on each link. You don't need more than that, it's just wasted. One drop at a time. I don't care if you're using wet lube or not, one drop. Because you want the, the lube to go in between the roller and the pin. I am not dropping it in between the rollers. I'm dropping it on the actual roller because there is no reason to loop between the rollers. That is just a waste. I mean, you know, you can see some of the professional mechanics in the tour. They'll spin the bike, the, the chain, the drive train, and then spray it with the loop. They're doing so many bikes that they don't have the time to do what I'm doing here. So what they do though, even though they do that after they're done, they're going to dry that chain. They're going to wipe off all the excess because anything you leave there will just pick up the dust and grit that's on the road as we ride. 
So as I put the lube on there, once I'm done, I pull the roller back. The dot that I marked on that link is coming now, the black mark. That lets me know when I've gone completely around because I don't want to overdo. I don't want to do a link more than once. And now I'm done. Put this down. A lot of uh, instructions out there will say you need to wait a little bit for the lube to get in. I mean, I, it depends on what kind of lube you're, doing, you're using. The lube I'm using is very light. It's already in there. Anything on top, you know, it's a little extra. So what I usually do is I may let it sit for maybe 15, 20 minutes. I rarely lube right before a ride. I like to lube the day before or maybe two to three hours before. But if you had to, you could. Because with this kind of lube, which is very light and it actually cleans while it lubes, this is the ProLink lube. I have the link on our website for those of you who want to procure some. It's my favorite lube because I can use it all year in all weather conditions. I like the fact that it cleans my drivetrain as I'm riding. It brings all the dirt and dust that the chain encounters. It keeps it on the surface. So when you get home and you wipe it off, your chain looks new. This is not a new chain, but it looks new. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you what I do. So once I'm done, I hold the chain. It helps to have a bike stand. If you're doing it with a bike leaning against something, yeah, it's possible, but then you're bent over all the time and you can ache your, it can ache your back. But this is so much easier. So for you serious cyclists out there, I recommend getting a bike stand. This one is made by, uh, I'll put the link for the company here because I don't remember their name because they got bought out. It's called Ultimate Support. It's simple. It's also foldable. So if you want to travel with it, it gets small enough to where you can put it in a bag that comes with it and travel with it. But I keep it set up like this most of the time. But it works really well and it's very lightweight. Good stand. That's it. That's all I do. You can see how dirty this is. That's just the, the whatever grit was on it, the lube's bringing it out. I use my dirtiest rag or my oldest rag, but I don't use a, the spot that's already filthy. I use the clean spot until it's all clean. Do not take these rags and put them in your washing machine. If you want to clean them, take them to a commercial place that, place that cleans rags for auto, automobile shops and so forth because if you put this in a washing terrier's machine or whatever, the, the grease and stuff will just leave residues and the next person coming to use the machine, it will get on their clothes. Definitely don't do it in your own machine at home. If you want to clean these, you can get the greaser, soak it in a container. If you want to to get into that. I just get rid of these. I just get new ones because I just don't have the time to deal with the hassle. So I go ahead and dispose of these when they're, when they're dirty. And that's it. See, every time you run it through, it's cleaning what was already on there. And that's it. Once you do that, you lube your chain, you're ready to go. That's the main thing you can do because uh, the bike was stored inside, first of all. Or in the house, like I store it, which is, I think is the best place to store your bicycle if you've got a storage room or something, with temperature control, or in your garage, that's good. But really outside on the porch for a bicycle, you need more maintenance because the moisture, the dew and whatever, it will put surface rust on your, your components. So I don't like to store my bicycle outside. I store it in the garage or in the house, okay? So there's not much else that you need to do with the bike if it's been sitting for a while unless it had a pre-existing problem. So make sure that that little thing does not stop you from getting out there if you've been off for a while. Just get out and start getting the case in.